Tim's IVF. The survey, which was carried out online with over 400 respondents, compared responses and the experiences of men and women under the headings of external pressures to reach milestones in life, what they struggled most with during treatment and how comfortable they would be discussing their fertility journey outside of their relationship. Well, Dr. Alex Aldape is clinical director of Sims IVF and he's on the line now. Good morning to you, Alex. Hi, good morning to everyone. Thanks, thanks indeed for, for me. Thanks for joining us. Now, the results highlighted that even though the focus is often on women in heterosexual relationships during fertility treatment, that men are experiencing similar emotions and similar concerns. Yeah, that, that's absolutely correct. So what we, what, the reason why we came with this idea of doing this survey is because you see sometimes we are kind of focusing too much on women uh, and we have to say that male we are suffering in silence too. Uh, the process is very unique when it comes to doing treatments, uh, IVF cycles or assessments even. Uh, and yeah, so it, it is important also to kind of uh, put the focus also in, on, on men because uh, actually what, it, what, what amazed us more is that actually that the result they were kind of mirroring what's happening with women so actually men also they struggle to communicate this to to uh to uh, to colleagues they struggle to communicate this to to uh to their families as well is this to do with stigma maybe or some people might feel embarrassed or ashamed which i know is something that you would deal with and see quite regularly and talk to people saying that this is not something that you need to be ashamed of and we're here to help but do you think maybe that's why the the conversation is difficult to have i think i think it's a mix of factors you see it's just like on both sides when they come to clinics they in a way, the they, um, female, but also male, they, they know that they have kind of to perform. You see, there's that, that kind of a benchmark when it comes to the semen assessment. So they, they always struggle like, oh, my God, my, my semen sample should be better than this in order to go to IVF, to ICSI. It's a mix, mix of things. And then, of course, there is this emotional side of the, of the treatment. What, uh, that to be honest, we do not focus too much on that one, and that was the reason why we said, okay, we need to get this information rather than taking decisions based on intuition to see what's going on. But I have to say, to answering that question, it, it is a mix of factors, in, in not only a stigma, but also the fact that when patients are coming to to the treatments, that they have this pressure that they need to perform. I note as well the feedback from your patients often depicts the male partner as having a more passive involvement in treatment. You know, the woman might have to visit the clinic more often. There's more treatments involved with her, whereas the male is really only involved at the start of the process. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Traditionally, that was the, the, the old way of doing fertility, which is just pretty much focusing on women. Women are, are the ones that they're coming more to the, to the clinic. But and yes, and then we were just on the, on the depression that for men will be just coming here, producing the sperm sample, and that's it. But that's absolute, absolutely not what we want to do. We want to have more. We want to acknowledge and we want to tell to everybody that, of course, male also, they are our, our, our patients too. And we need to focus on, on, on them. We need to focus on their needs. Uh, and sometimes they are, they're coming to the office just sharing some stories and sharing some uh, experience that they have previously. And that was the reason why we say, okay, we need to get, uh, uh, we need to get, get uh, better data to see exactly what we can offer, what we, how we can tailor the treatment plan for including men as well. And we can, how we can have a better and holistic approach for them as well. Okay, if we go back to the findings then of this survey, male respondents struggled slightly more with telling their family and friends about receiving fertility treatment. 73% said it was difficult, while 62 of women uh, said it was difficult in contrast. Were you surprised at all to see maybe men found it harder to speak about it, or is that something that you would have uh, expected? Well, I would say that, it, you see, it's kind of, kind of close, 68 and 62. I would say that probably that was uh, um, a little bit expected because, you see, somebody has to be, like, the strong when it comes to uh, the couple. And and, uh, and sometimes we just want to kind of, uh, as I said, it's just like men, my, my impression is that they are suffering in silence. But that was the reason for doing this uh, survey. And yeah, I, I'm not so surprised with that, with that outcome in that question particularly. Okay, what else did it find then, or what other questions did you pose to men and women in the survey? So it, it was a, it, it was a really kind of um, um, 
broad spectrum of questions, but other that they were interesting to see it, it was when it comes to the, the milestones uh, that they need to achieve during life. And, and as you can see, there is more pressure on, on, on women on women's side. Uh, what, what we have here is that 44% uh, percent of the males, they responded that they don't feel this pressure of kind of having milestones during life compared to 76% uh, percent of women. So, yeah, it, it's just, it just um, we are getting a more comprehensive uh, view of how we are, we are, uh, we are having, um, we're dealing with patients, of course, and how uh, patients, particularly for male side, how they feel when it comes to uh, doing treatments as well. Some people already getting in touch with us on the uh, text line to say that, you know, they've had experiences of IVF and uh, very, very positive experiences as well. There might be a perception, Dr. Aldape, that perhaps when somebody um, goes through this or somebody, a couple, say, realizes that they are infertile or they can't conceive naturally, that that's the end of the road. But that's not the case. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So the thing is like, yeah, it's, it's just, um, you see, it, it's a difficult, uh, diagnose to, to get, of course. It's, it's a lot to take in because the, the problem, the main problem is that we are taking fertility for granted. It's just like that it shouldn't be that complicated to get pregnant, right? But then when, when it comes to the facts and when we're seeing that, uh, well, it's one, more than one year, uh, not getting there. Well, getting that diagnosis, of course, is very, very frustrating and disappointed. And that is the reason why as I said previously, we normally focus more on women, but now it's time definitely to kind of uh, having a better better understanding about what's going on with male, because we do believe that what is happening now is that they're getting a lot of pressure too, but it, we most of the times we forget about them because as, as, as we as we were saying also it's just like traditionally it was just, just come to, walk to a clinic once or twice just to produce an sperm sample and, and, and that's it but we need to see this more inclusive we need to acknowledge that they are our patients too we need to kind of uh, tailor the treatment plan in a way that they are also feeling involved as well as part of the as part of the treatment uh, and yeah I think and, and, and think that that's the main the main point of of um, doing this survey to get more information about it. Okay, if we may just talk about um, fertility treatment then in general and what might cause um, a person, a man or a woman to be infertile? What are some of the common causes there? And there's often no symptoms. Yeah, you are absolutely right. So the, the, the most common will be um, will be more related to age, to age factor, okay? And, and of course, there's uh, there is this uh, kind of... Um, uh, idea that of course age only matters for for women and we're saying okay when women are above 40 35 years old that potentially they can struggle more to 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 get pregnant but you see what we know is actually for men as well men uh when they are above 35 years old also we know that the, not only the 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 the, the, the semen assessment but also the yeah i mean all the parameters on the semen assessment they can kind of drop a, a, a bit so uh so essentially, essentially, the most common will be age, but there's other kind of stuff like no, not having, for instance, good sperm production, not having good motility, good morphology. Those could be environmental factors that could be related to diet, that could be related to other kind of, of things or medical background. That is the reason why it's very important to have a good assessment, and that is the reason why it's important to um, get a, a consultation to see exactly what's going on. There is something that is called mixed factor when it comes to could be on both sides of the couples as well. Okay, and then finally, talk us through the fertilization process then if people are listening and uh, maybe want to, to go down this route. How does that work? Yeah, so uh, essentially the way it works is that uh, once we are getting a, a patients that they want to come to, to the clinic, what we do is normally we organize an initial consultation. So in that initial consultation, it's very important to get the medical history first to see if there's anything in the background that is kind of causing infertility or that can harm the, the fertility of, of both of them. Uh, at the same time, what we what we do is that we, we require some investigations. There is not something that is uh, um, required for that particular couple. Sometimes it's about evaluating not only the, the, the AMH, which is an kind of the viral reserve of females, but also uh, the semen assessment, DNA fragmentation. There are several investigations that we can do once we're getting those investigations, we get the diagnosis, and with that one, we prepare a treatment plan. So we are talking about a, a process of uh, one or two appointments. It all depends on the information that they they can bring uh, bring with them, and also it all depends of uh, particularly what is the situation with with, with the couple. Whether
they are struggling to get pregnant. Okay, well listen, it's been great talking to you this morning, very insightful and uh, that new survey has been released providing an insight into the experiences of men going through fertility treatment compared to women as well and that is uh, Dr Alex Adalpe of uh, Clinical Director of Sims IVF. Thanks for your time this morning.